gather this day in silence and hope. We wait for God's word for us. Let your hearts and spirits be open for God is our strength and salvation. Wait patiently for the Lord. With willing hearts and spirits, we will wait for the Lord. Amen. Holy God, creator of a new reality just now coming into view. We have come today to see and touch and know your presence with us. Lord, be with us as we listen for your call. Help us hear afresh the good news that power and steadfast love arise from you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. For God alone, 
My soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up. They are together, lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, siblings in Christ, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved, beloved church, how mighty is our God. How firm is our foundation in the one who loves us and made us and calls us again and again. 
Friends, in these last few weeks, we have been engaging with the three simple rules. We have recommitted ourselves to these rules, and we are mindful of our actions. We will do no harm. We will do good. And today, we will explore the third rule. Stay in love with God. Now, John Wesley used the language to attend upon all the ordinances of God. We have, in our day, modified this language, and it is now generally acceptable to say, stay in love with God. But, either way, what does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean to attend to the ordinances of God? How is it? that we stay in love with God. Again, John gives us a few short examples. The first thing is to engage in public worship. Public worship brings together the community of faith to take a pause from the busyness of the world and collectively engage in the act of worshiping God. Here, together, we offer our thanksgiving and adoration. Together, we offer our prayers. Together, we engage in the practices that bind us in community. And in our public worship, we make a public stance, affirming our faith. Now, public worship is often the main focus of a church, and it is central to our faith practices, but it is only one part. Worship is typically the most visible part of our faith. Yet in these COVID times, when our physical gathering remains unsafe, our tending to public worship must take on a slightly different form. Now, our public worship is available. You can watch it at any point during the week. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Facebook. You can even get it emailed directly to you. But no matter when we come to worship, we should still be coming and engaging with our worship intentionally. And as we engage with our worship, we need to be acknowledging our community. We can still hold one another in our hearts and our minds as we worship God. We can still hold true the presence of our community as we remain apart together. The second example we find is the ministry of the word, either written or preached. Now, we regularly engage in the ministry of the word during our public worship. We hear the scriptures read. We hear the scriptures preached. But there are so many other ways that we can tend to the scriptural texts. They can be read in community. We can use them in our prayer time. We can present scripture as an offering to God. Today's psalm would be a great example of this. Now, as we engage with the text, we can acknowledge our own relationship with God. We can find a sense of grounding and peace, a place to dwell. I come in silence before you, O oh God. You are my refuge and my strength. 
steadfast love belongs to the Lord. And church, so do we. Another ordinance we typically tend to in public worship is the Lord's Supper or communion. While we all come to this sacrament with different understandings and different theologies surrounding this mystery of grace, we can all acknowledge that God is present and at work in this sacred moment. And here, as God reaches out to us and meets us where we are, we can reach ourselves, our spirits, our hearts out to God to share in this loving embrace and follow where God is leading us. In this sacrament of communion, we are welcomed into God's loving arms, and we are nourished for the journey ahead. Prayer, private prayer and family prayer, is another way in which we can strengthen our relationship with God. Private prayer is going to look different for different people. It can look like scripture. It can involve written daily devotions. It can take the form of a prayer list. You can use prayer beads or scripted prayers. It can involve lighting candles or lighting incense, talking to God, or just sitting in silence, waiting and listening. Your time in private prayer may look like none of these things, and it may be a very personal and intimate time. And that's okay. What matters most is that we keep open the line of communication. And sometimes we will pray begrudgingly. And sometimes words will fail us. And sometimes we will be so angry and we will lash out at God. And that's okay. God is big enough to hold your pain. Now, the way I see it, God can handle it. And God's love is big enough to cover it and to hold it, to heal it and transform it, and to continue offering us love through all those moments. Prayer is, is a gift that we can give, not just to God, but also to ourselves. And we can create a habit or a pattern of prayer in our own lives, in our own homes, and our own families. Another practice we can strengthen in our families is searching the scriptures. We all know there are times when we come to the end of ourselves, when we're frightened or overwhelmed or angry or sad. We often, in times of trouble, will turn to the scriptures for comfort and guidance. We can search the scriptures for truth, for strength, for discernment. But it's just as important to search and study the scripture in times of contentment or joy. By regularly engaging with the text, by participating in Bible studies, by looking at the Bible with a critical and discerning mind, we can be opened to deeper layers of understanding than if we just took a passing glance. It is important to understand the scripture by looking at the context and the intended audience. It's important to know the history 
not just how the text is engaged today. When we study the word in this way, we find not only comfort and encouragement, but deep wisdom and the very presence of God with us. The last practice Wesley offers us is fasting and abstinence. Now, we often think of these as Lenten practices, or even as something outdated that people really don't do anymore. Now, during Lent, we might give up eating chocolate or drinking alcohol. We might even choose not to spend any money during that 40-day period. Now, we might fast on Fridays, especially if we grew up Catholic. But for the most part, we have really abandoned these spiritual practices. Yet at the same time, our lives are increasingly marked by excess. When and if we fast, we are fasting from the wealth of our reserves. But how often do we intentionally abstain from practices that are self-serving? How often do we fast from our fears? Can we practice these disciplines like the woman in the story of the widow's might? Can we practice true fasting and abstinence in such a way that it reaches down to the depths of our being? And there, in the emptiness of ourselves, might we just come to know God even more? Church, as Methodists, we have a long tradition of tending to these three simple rules. We have a long tradition of caring for these spiritual practices that bring us ever closer to God. As we develop or redevelop or reinforce our own spiritual disciplines, we will find our relationship with God growing in new ways taking us to new depths. We will come to embody and know more completely how God could love even us. And we, church, will be examples of how to love God, even in this world. Amen. We listen to the stories of the call of the disciples and find them interesting, but unrealistic. When we look at our own lives, we believe that we could not leave everything to follow someone we didn't know. We have many responsibilities and ties which keep us from following. But God is persistent. God understands our confusion and doubts. And God continues to call us to be in ministry and mission in this world. It may not mean leaving everything behind, but it does mean being willing to serve wherever God calls us. And that's hard. We want to place conditions on service. And usually those conditions are if we have time, if we have energy, if we can just try serving God for a little while and see how it goes. And still, God calls to each of us. Discipleship is difficult. Forgive us 
patient and persistent, Lord. For the very many times we turn our backs on serving you and focus on our own comforts. Forgive us when we look the other way when people are in need. Forgive us our angry attitudes and actions which hurt and harm rather than heal. Wrap your loving arms around us. Heal our wounds. Bind us to you. Gently, Lord, move us into your service. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go out to meet a changing world, remember this. God alone is our rock and our salvation. The risen Christ is calling each of us to share the good news of the realm of God. The realm of God is near and we are on the way. Amen.